Let me know when you roll it. Isaiah 62, 6. Yeah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. I have set rich men up in thy rows. What did the Lord say? I have set rich men up in thy rows. O Jerusalem, oh who? O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace. We shall what? We shall never hold their peace. Read day or night. He that made mention of the Lord, keep not silent. What did the Lord say? Keep not silent. Don't be quiet. Keep not silent. The Lord said to keep not silent. The watchman. We're literally WFI, the watchman for Israel. Right. So we got to come out here and we got to show our people who they are. We got to show them where they're going off and bring them back to Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And with that, I want to give a mighty call on the Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Again, we're the watchman for Israel. We come out here week in and week out to what? To wake our people up. Hey, brother, brother with the eagle's hat. Hey, brother, you got two minutes, brother? You believe in the Bible? Two minutes, brother. Yeah, 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 two minutes, real quick, brother. Let's show them something. I gotta go to work. This is important, brother. This is more important than work, brother. Hey, brother, take a flyer. Hey, brother. Take, take a flyer. Take a flyer, brother. We got you. Take a flyer, real quick. Right, so we come out here to one, wake our people up, show the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people who they are according to the Bible, history, and archaeology. Right. right? We come out here to prophesy against the downfall of the mayor of America, aka Babylon the Great, according to the Bible, and let you know that America will soon be destroyed sooner than later. And we are here to also give the heathen their judgment if they come up and they have any questions, right? right. So we have to give me uh give me second Timothy one. Saki, so, okay, second Timothy four two, man. Brothers gonna be using this precept not just here but all across America today. Right? Like the brother said, we got to make our bodies a living sacrifice, and we got to do that no matter what the weather is, right? right, right. Let me get this. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Right, Preach up. the word. What did the Lord say? Preach, Preach the, the word. word. Be, in, be instant in season, out of season. The Lord said, be instant in season and out of season. Read. Reprove. Right. Rebuke. Right. Exhort. With all long suffering. With what? With all long suffering. Right. And doctrine. And what? And doctrine. We have to come in here in season, out of season, whether it's 115 degrees, where it's negative 12 degrees, whether there's snow, sleet, rain. The brothers are going to come out here. We're going to put in the work. Right. right? Give me Isaiah 6 and verse 8. Give me uh, Psalm 94. Give me verse number 16. Because somebody's got to come out here and do the work. Right? The Lord sent his prophets. Hey, brother, what's going on, King? Hey, brother, you believe in God? Hey, brother, give us two minutes. Let us show you the words of the Lord, brother. We, hey, brother, we out here for brothers like you. We not here in negative weather for no reason, brother. We out here for brothers like yourself. Hey, brother, we know it's all love. Come on, give us two minutes. Right? So we have to come here and show our people who they are, man. Whether it's, like I said, whether it's, it's 100 something degrees or it's negative something degrees. And guess what? We're going to be out here doing the words of the Lord, even if it's only for a couple hours, man. Because the Lord's going to send us that elect within those couple hours that they're supposed to be sealed, man. Because right. man's goings are of the Lord's. They're going to be in the right place at the right time. And the Lord's going to send his people, the, uh, the servants, the prophets, to do the work of the Lord. Right. Let me get this in Isaiah 6 and 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Right. Also I've heard the voice of your howl right. saying, Who shall I send? What the Lord said, Who shall, shall I send? Read. And who will go for us? Right. Then said I. And they said who? Then said I. I. And all the brothers said what? Here am I. Here am I. Send me. Then what? Send, send me. Then what? Send, send me. me. And we out here, we said, hey Lord, send me. Right? right? Send us. All the brothers what? Give me Mark 8 and go to verse number 34. Brothers all, hey brother. Hey, brother, real quick, can you give us two minutes? You believe in the Lord? You say you don't have two minutes, brother? Hey, it's not two minutes for us, it's two minutes for the Lord, brother. Right, and Isaiah said, send me. The same way the brothers all come out here, we said, hey, listen, send us. Hey, brother, you see yourself on the chart? Um, you see yourself on the chart right here? You see yourself on the chart? On the left side, on, on your right side. Spanish. Spanish, Mexican. Mexican? It's the car. It's towards the bottom, right? Yes. Oh, praise the most high. Hey, let me get uh let me get judges uh ten. No, let me get Joshua ten and verse number one. Right? You would come from the tribe of Issachar. You believe in the Bible? Yeah. You say, yeah, because in Mexico they were heavy Roman Catholics, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Okay, all praises, right? So we're trying to show our people that according to the Bible, Mexican is just a byword. Let me get let me get Psalm 44 and 14. Mexican is just a byword. The same way they call us black. They call our brothers Puerto Rican and Mexican. That's not what, you don't find those terms in the Bible, right? So according to the Bible, what would be your actual nationality? Because you can't find Mexican in the Bible. You follow me? So that's what man calls you. So the question is, what would God call you? Right. 
You don't know, right? You said what? Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters? Well, the Lord, you know, the Lord has a chosen uh, group of people. He just, he made all the humanity, but he's divided them into different nations. Right, let me get that in uh, Deuteronomy 32 and verse, somebody give me that Deuteronomy 32 and 7. The Lord divided all the nations and he chose one group of people to be his chosen people. Right, so the question is if God has a chosen people, on top of the question we just asked you, what would be a God-given nationality? It would be uh, 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 who's God's chosen people. Right, let me get Psalm 44 and 14. Psalms chapter 44 and verse 14. Right. Oh. Thou makest us a byword, the Lord said, Thou, thou makest us, us a byword among the heathen. Among among the the Lord said that the Israelites, because if you didn't know, the Israelites were God's chosen people when you read the Old Testament and, and in the New Testament, right? They were his chosen people. But because they disobeyed the covenant that they made with God, do you have any kids? No, all right, now say you had kids, right? And you told them to do their chores. If they didn't do their chores, guess what happened? They got punished for it, right? They got grounded, they got their phone taken away, whatever the case was. The Lord did the same thing with his people. Right? As the children, as his children, the children of Israel. He said, if you don't obey my covenant, do the chores I told you to do, I'm going to punish you. Right? So now when the Lord punished them, give me Deuteronomy 28, go to verse number 46. Right? When he punished them, he put those, he put the punishments as signs on his people. So help you identify who these people are. Right? Let me get Jeremiah 17 and 4, 4 real quick. Right? So we're making a bold statement like the brothers always say. That we would be the child, we would be the um, the children of Israel. That's right. Right? Somebody give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Read this. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Right and thou, even thyself, the Lord said that thou, even thyself, the Israelites, shall what? Shall discontinue. Shall what? Shall discontinue. Do you know what it means to discontinue? It means to detach, to forget about. Right? The Lord said that you're going to detach or forget about what? From thine heritage, from thy what? From, from thine heritage, heritage that I gave thee. Your heritage also includes your nationality, where you come from, the language that you speak. It's your culture. Essentially, it's just your culture, right? So you're going to detach and forget about your nationality and all in the culture that you came from, right. right? And what? And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. What? And I will cause thee to serve thine, thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Now the Lord said, you're going to be in another, not only are you going to detach from your nationality, you're not going to know who you are, I'm going to put you in another land and you're going to be serving your enemies. Now, let me ask you a question. Who, who put the Mexican people in slavery? The Spaniards, right? Now, how, do you know how long you all were serving the Spaniards for? Centuries, right? You were in a land, you guys didn't originate in Mexico, right? You people came from across the seas, you guys came to Mexico, you, uh, uh, what's the word, you colonized there, and you settled in that land, and then guess who came and uh, took, overtook you guys? The Spaniards, right? The Lord said that you would be in another land that you didn't know, and you would be serving your enemies. That fits your people perfect, right? Same with black people. You think we're from America? No, we were brought here on what? On slave ships, right? Same with everybody else that you see on this chart. We all were in one land, and now we're in another land, and we were all put in slavery. The Lord said that that is a curse that would happen to the nation of Israel. Right? Let me get Deuteronomy 28. Go to verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. And it says, and it says, moreover, all these curses, all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So we said all these curses are going to happen to the Israelites, right? When you start the, when you start Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, he gives you all the blessings. Like if you go to, if your kid goes to school, and I remember why I used to go to school in elementary school, every time I would come over with my report card, my grandfather would give us $20 for every A that we got, right? So you would get a reward for doing what you told what you're supposed to do, right? right? But he said, but you're going to be a curse if you don't keep the commandments that I gave you, right? Like if you come in with F's and D's, you're going to get grounded, you get your Xbox taken away, you can't go outside, you can't ride your bike, you're taking your phone, right? Read on. Because thou hearkenest not, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he said all these punishments are going to happen for not keeping my commandments, right? Read on. To keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee this day. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So he said these, these curses are going to be for a sign. And a sign helps you just identify something. Right? So he said, now the curses are going to be for a sign on the Israelite sea line forever. Now, how long is forever? Eternity. Right? So that shows you, one, that the Israelites must still be here. And two, give me Daniel 9 and 11. We know that the Israelites did not keep the commandments of God. Right. So guess what happened to them? 
the curses. The curses befell the Israelites because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to do their chores, go to school, get their good grades, keep the commandments, but they didn't. So guess what happened? They got punished, right? Read that. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Yea, all uh, Israel have transgressed thy law. Right. Even by the point it says all Israel transgressed the law. I mean all Israel broke the law. Right? Read on. That they might not obey thy voice. Right. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. It says therefore the curse is poured upon us. That what? And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. The oath that's written in the law. That's what we're reading right now in Deuteronomy 28 chapter. The, law, the oath that was written in the law of Moses, which is, if you kept the commandments, these things would happen. If you didn't, then these curses would happen. So it says, now the curse is poured upon us. We know. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servants of God, because we have sinned against it. Because what? Because we have sinned against it. Because we sinned, we broke the commandments of God. Now all these curses happen to us. And one of those curses is that we, is that we would detach, we would discontinue from our nationality, right, that God gave us. Right? Now there's more curses, right? I'm going to show you two more. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and go to verse number 16. And give me Deuteronomy 28 and go to verse number 49. Right? Verse 16. Right? Curse shall thou be in the city. What the Lord say? Curse shall thou be in the city. And curse shall thou be in the field. Now, brother, we already talked about what was our people doing in the field? Working. Working, right? Was, were we willingly working? Like, oh, just an eight hour shift, clock in, clock out. We were forced out there for 16 plus hours. We're forced out there, right? We were we weren't working. We were slaving, right. right? Would you say that's a blessing? No, right. The Lord said that what right? the Israelites will be cursed in the field, right? And those same people that are cursed in the field, they will be cursed in the city. Right. Where do black and Hispanic people live in the city? Outside. You said outside. Do we live Do we live uh, in the penthouses and the sky rises and the suburbs and the, the gated communities, or do we live in the hoods, in the projects, and the, yeah, we live where we live in the ghetto. Right? We live in the worst parts of the city where there's trash, there's violence, there's gangs, there's drugs, right? Oppression. The Lord said that the Israelites, they would be cursed in the city and in the field. The only people that you, are the Chinese people living in the hood? As a, as a collective group. No, right? Are, 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 Arab, are Arab people, are Arab people slaving in the field? No, right? Who, what people were slaving in the field and live in the hoods? Black and Hispanic people. Right, so this curse only fits one nation of people. That would be the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people. That we're making that claim that what? We would be the children of Israel because we fit the curses. That's right. Right? Give me verse 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Right. The Lord shall send against Salaki. The Lord shall send a nation against thee. Right. From far, from where? From, from far. Reed. From the end of the earth, right. as swift as the eagle flight. Now, you already said it. What people conquered your people? The Spaniards, right? Now the Lord said uh, he was sent a nation from far. They came from Spain to Mexico, which when you do the um the uh the radius across the earth, it would be half the, it'd be half the distance. It took them about a year and a half to get there, right? That's from far, right? He said as swift as the eagle flies. Have you ever seen the Spaniard flag from back then? Because they had to renew it some hundreds of years ago. Do you know what it looks like now? What it looked like back then? It looked just like this with this brother guy right here. What type of animal is that that's on, on the, what type of bird is that? An that's an eagle. The Lord said as swift as the eagle fly. Right. That's not just a, uh, 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 what's the word? That's yeah, that's not just a coincidence, right? right? The Lord said, and that's the, that's the reason that the American uh, 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 national bird is what? Is an eagle, right? Even when you go over to Rome and Spain, that's still their national bird, right? So the Lord said as swift as the eagle flies, read on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You know what, you know what language you people were speaking? So if I'm not mistaken, if you go into Mexico, there's an archaeological finding, and I believe it's uh, the Decalogue Stone, I be, or it's the Bat Creek Stone, because there's two Bat Creek Stones. I think one of them is in Mexico. It's written in Paleo Hebrew, right? So you people are speaking what? The Hebrew, right? So the Lord said, a nation who the, whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You're speaking Hebrew. Guess what language they're speaking? Spanish. Why do you think your people speak Spanish now? Right? Because when you when you colonize, you conquer a group of people, you give them your their your, their culture. They were they were what? They were Spaniards. That was in Spain, right? They're teaching their uh their their um what was their predominant uh religion? Roman Catholicism. That's why you guys have Roman Catholicism. They were speaking Spanish. That's why you people speak what? Spanish, right? What's that? That's it. That's the Decalogue Stone, right? That's found in Mexico, right? Show that brother that real quick. Oh. See, people think we just niggas out here with violence. 
Brothers got archaeology, brothers got history. Brothers know what they're talking about out there, man. That's why the Lord said it's very so It's filmed in this is the Ten Commandments in, in Mexico. Oh, really? See that? Right? That's found in Mexico. Right? Even when you talk to America, America, they have the that's the Decalogue stone, right? Yeah, and then they have the Bat Creek Stone, which you found in Ohio and Tennessee, and they're what? They're written in Hebrew, showing you that the people that were over here, that, that came over here, the Native Americans and the uh, Seminole Indians, they were speaking what? They were speaking the same language, right? They were speaking Hebrew. Your people were conquered by what? By so Your people was conquered by what? So-called Spaniards. That's why your people now speak Spanish, right? It says, so a nation shall come against thee, whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Read on. Verse 50, right. a nation of fierce countenance. Yeah. What? A nation of fierce countenance. What? We shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young. So we already know that when they came over there, was they sparing any of people? Like, oh, it's just a little kid, just leave him alone. Or she's a woman, she's she's good. No, they didn't care if you was young, old, an infant, a woman, a child, it doesn't matter. They weren't sparing anybody. They was loaded up, y'all up on ships. They were sending, they just found not too long ago, um, a Mayan ship. Had left Mexico, uh, uh, ancient Mayan slave ship that was founded right off the coast of Mexico that uh, sunk, right? So there's archaeological finds that to show you that what? Those people, what your people was what? Put in slavery, which would line completely up with the scriptures. You know what prophecy is? Prophecy is something that's spoken beforehand and that comes to pass later. There's no prophecies that we're reading that the Lord said, if you don't keep my commandments, these things will come to pass. Right, and we can see in history throughout time that these things indeed can happen, and you can only fit them on one nation of people. And that's these people that we have on the chart, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people that you read about in the Bible. Right. right? We, would, we would be the children of Israel today, God's chosen people. Right? right? Somebody got Deuteronomy 7 and 6? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Somebody put that real quick. Chapter 7, verse 6. Read this is what the Lord said about the children of Israel. Right? Read on. For thou art an unholy people. What the Lord said, for thou art an unholy people. The Lord said that we're a holy people, meaning that we're set apart. Right? Read on. Unto the Lord thy God, right. the Lord thy God has chosen thee, has what? Has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. The Lord said that he chose us to be his special people. That's like we say all the time, if you got your favorite pair of shoes, you kind of keep them in the box. All your other shoes might be under the bed or wherever. Or, or wherever. But you got your chosen, your special pair of shoes that you always make sure they're clean. You rarely wear them. They're boxed up all the time. That's how the Lord feels about us. He said that we're a chosen people. Read on. Above all people. Now we're at the bottom. Above all people. What about equality? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord said that we're above all people that are upon the face of the earth. There's no equality with that. This is out the word, these are the words of God. Right? He said that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people, I chose you to be above all the other nations that's on the earth. But does it make any sense that he chose us to be at the top, but we're living at the bottom? You, now you understand why we live at the bottom. Because we didn't keep the commandments of God. So to teach us a lesson, he said, what? Now I'm going to boot you off the top. You was the richest, wisest people. And I'm going to put you at the bottom. bottom you're just going to be niggas and spicks. Right. right? You're going to be a byword amongst all the other nations. They look at us like... Hey, these niggas just know how to kick the soccer ball around or how to dribble or how to rap and shoot their own brothers. The Lord put these curses of curses upon us to show us, to teach us a lesson so we can come back and we can officially keep the commandments of the Most High God, right? The same way you teach a child a lesson when he does something wrong, now he knows better. This is a lesson. This is the, this is the Lord whooping our ass right now, right? But now we have to come back and we have to serve the Most High God and we have to keep the commandments as an Israelite, not as a Mexican, right. not as a black man, not as a Puerto Rican, not as a Native American, as an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar, from the tribe of Benjamin, from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Ephraim, from the tribe of Simeon, and so on, right? All these, we would all be brothers and sisters, but we all have to wake up and understand that we would be the children of Israel to this day, right? So let me get, uh, let me get Deuteronomy 10 and let me get verse number 12. Right, so you understand what we're talking about, right, brother? You understand that you, you your guy. If you had to fill out a job application, <clears throat> you would have put Mexican, right? God would call you an Israelite. Doesn't matter what God calls you or what man calls you. Right. It, it, ma it matters what man, what God calls you, right? Let me get John eight and verse number thirty-two real quick. It matters what God calls you. You got any questions, brother? You got any questions? No. Oh, okay, you just looking. All right, all praise, brother. Let me get that John eight. John. 8 and 32 right and you shall know the truth what the Lord said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free the Lord said that you shall know the truth now the Lord told you in Psalm the 85th chapter that um that truth will spring out of the earth right and in Luke 12 and 2 there's nothing here that will not be uncovered right so now you're starting to see the truth come out 
Right? We in the, it's, it's literally, I just checked it. It's zero degrees out here right now. It feels like zero degrees. Right? And we're still out here for brothers like you right. just so we can do the work of God to wake up our people in the last days to show them who they are before the world comes to an end. Because when the Lord comes back, he's only come back for the, uh, for the children of Israel. Right? Let me get that in Matthew 15 and 24. He's only come back to save these people, the 12 tribes. Right? And Luke 1 and 68. Right? Because contrary to popular belief, they say that Christ came for everybody. Right? Did Christ ever say I'm here for everybody? Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> Christ, actually, Christ actually never said that. Right? They take John 3.16 out of at, at, uh, uh, at contest. Right? We're going to show you exactly what Christ said out of his own mouth. You read the Bible at all? Or have you read it? You have read? Okay, so you know when it's in red letter, it means Christ is talking, right? Alright, this is in red letter, right? Let's read this. Book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. What did the Lord say? I, I am not sent. sent. He said, I'm not sent. Meaning, I didn't come for anybody else but what? But unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Of the who? Of the house of Israel. He said, I didn't come but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. So when Christ came on the scene, he's like, I'm not here for nobody else. That's why Christ came to his people. That's right. right. Let me read this in Luke 1. Luke 1 and verse number 68. Right? So, so when Christ came on the scene, he said, listen, I'm not here for all the other nations. Right. Can you turn around for me real quick? Lord, this Lord made 18 nations of people. Right? But guess what? He said, I only came for what? For one. The nation of Israel, guys, because Christ was a Jew. Right? Everybody knows that Christ was a Jew. So Christ would actually come from the tribe of Judah. Right? That would be his God-given nationality. Right? So he only came for his people. So his people mean what? The children of Israel, the 12 tribes. Right? Read that in Luke. <coughs> Luke 1 and 68. Right? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be who? Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, Lord God, God of Israel. Israel. For, what? For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Is what? His people. So he visited and redeemed his people. Right? right? So that's what Christ came to do. He came to give repentance for, for salvation to the nation of Israel. Because right. when you read through the scriptures, the Lord said that only Israel shall be saved. Give me that in Psalm 69 and go to verse number 34. He said, Israel shall be saved. Right? And the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Right? So you have to understand that this isn't for everybody. This is brothers like yourself, the brothers and sisters you see behind you at Walk Passes, the brothers that you see up here. This is for the 12 tribes of Israel, according to the Bible, you black, Hispanic, and Native American people. Right? Read this for me. So like Psalm chapter 69, verse 34. Bring it up. And it reads. Right? Let the heaven and the earth praise them, right. the sea and everything that moveth therein. Right. For God will save Zion. No, the Lord's going to save everybody. For God will save Zion, read, and will build the city of Judah, right. that they may dwell there, and have it present, it's like an evident possession. Right. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. So the Lord said he's going to save Zion. Right? Which is goes back to what? The 12 tribes of Israel. Right. right? So he didn't come for anybody else. He came just to save us, brother, brothers like yourself. To bring you back to the understanding that you're an Israelite. Bring you back to the law, statutes, commandments. And now you have to keep the faith in Christ because that's what it's about at the end of the day. Right? You're going to be justified by your faith. Right. But your faith has to come with works. Right. Your works is the keeping of the commandments that Christ taught you. Right? Give me Matthew 22 and we'll start at verse number 36. Right? So... <clears throat> Give me Matthew 19, matter of fact, give me Luke 10 and give me verse number 25, right? So your faith has to come with the works, right? You have the faith in Christ, but the Lord said, hey, James told you, show me my faith, um, I will show you my faith by my works, right? So your works is actually keeping the commandments that God gave us, right? Let me get this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So this, so this Pharisee came to Christ, asked, he's actually a lawyer, he came to Christ asking, what is the greatest commandment in the law, right? We don't... Jesus said unto him, right. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, right. and with all thine mind. Right. This is the first and great commandment. So your first commandment is to love God. The way you love God according to 1 John 5 and 3 is by keeping his commandments. The only place you find the Lord's commandments is in the Old Testament in the law. Right? You know. And the second is life unto it. Right. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the two greatest commandments to love God and to love your neighbor. Right? When you love God, you keep his commandments. When you love your neighbor, are you going to kill your neighbor? No, you're going to kill him. If you love him, no, you're going to steal from him. Are you going to sleep with his wife? No, but all these things can be found where? In the law. Right? Read on. 
on these two commandments, on these what? On these two commandments, hey, what? And all the law and the prophets. So you have to understand the law because that's how you understand how to love God and to love your brother, right? Let me get this in Luke. Luke chapter 10 and verse number 25. Right and it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to be hurt and turn away? So, brother, do you want to die or would you rather live forever? You, right. you said what? Eventually die. Eventually, you would rather eventually die than live forever? Come on, brother. Hey, brother, would you rather die or live forever? Live Come on, everybody knows that. Come on, brother. You rather yeah, eternal life, and hey, that's the kingdom of heaven. Would you rather live eternally in the kingdom of heaven or eventually? Yeah, eventually, yeah. You want to live eternally in heaven. So that's what he's asking. How do I get eternal life? And listen to what Jesus Christ said. What is written in that law? The Lord said, What is written in that law? He said, What is written in your law? Meaning that if you know the law, you know how to get eternal life, right? Now Christ brought in grace, he brought in mercy and faith, right? So you have the faith in Christ. Hey, that, that, that's the mediator between you and God that he's going to have a, a, a mercy on you, right? But your faith has to be by keeping the keeping of the law, right? Give me uh, Deuteronomy 10 and give me verse number 12, right? So when you understand that you got to have the faith in Christ, then you understand, okay, well, Christ was telling me that I also got to keep the law, right? I have to do the things that are written in the law, right? So we're going to show you a couple of things out the law, right? Deuteronomy. I just got to... I just gotta go because I'm in a hurry. Okay, I'm gonna read this one verse for you. Give me, uh, give me Acts three and nineteen. I'm gonna read these two for you real quick. Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse twelve. Right. And now Israel, now who? And now Israel, brother, who are the children of Israel? God, no, who are the children of Israel? Uh, the tribe of Israel. Tribe of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. Who are they? All the. All the Hispanic, all the native, all the, all the people. All the people. All right, you get you say Hispanic and Native. I'll give you that. All the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're the children of Israel, right. right? You brother and all the brothers you see up here. We're the children of Israel, right? Read on. And now Israel, right. what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Now, being an Israelite, you have to understand what the Lord requires of you, because we're He said we're a nation of kings and priests. Now, if you're a king, which you are, brother, right? That's why we address you like that, brother or king, right? Now, if you're a king, do you do you do you do the things that peasants do? No, right? You have to move accordingly as a king, right? So the Lord gave you the commandments and the laws as how to move as a king, right? Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God, first thing you got to do is you got to fear God, right? Read on. To walk in all his ways right. and to love him right. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And this, all that is just summed up into one verse. Read on. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. And his statues, which I command thee this day for thy good. Because when we didn't keep the commandments, all these things happened to us, brother. Right? We was lynched. We was raped, robbed, murdered, buck broke. Right? All these things happened when we didn't keep the commandments of God. So now the Lord said, what does he require of us? He requires us to keep his commandments and keep the faith in Hamashiach Yahushai, who they call, the world calls Jesus Christ. Right? So, brother, you understand that you're an Israelite. The next thing you have to do is you have to understand that you have to keep the commandments that God gave us, right? I'm going to give you this last verse, all right? Give me this. Acts 3 and 19. Right, uh, repent ye therefore. What the Lord say? Repent ye therefore. And be converted. Right. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, the Lord said that we have to repent. When you repent, you ask for forgiveness for the sins that you committed. Now, the only way to know the sins that you committed is by knowing the law, right? Because sin is transgression of the law. So when you break the command, when you break the law, that's when you're in sin. So if you're breaking the Sabbath day, if you're eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, all matter of abomination, you're not wearing fringes, that's where you're in sin, right? Now, so you have to go back and understand the law. We're going to get, brothers got a flyer. You got a flyer. We're going to give you a flyer so you can go check out. We got a YouTube. We got all we got all types of videos and everything. All right, brother? So you can go check our stuff out. And Lord willing, you get edified and, and you come back to your nationality as an Israelite. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. That's your God. That's what God calls you. Man can call you what it, Man called me a nigger. And I'd be like, all right, because that's not what God called me. It doesn't face nobody no more. Right? So, brother, as an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar, you got to keep the commandments in the faith, brother, in these lands, because we're living in the last days, brother. All right, King? All right, brother. It was good talking to you, man. No doubt, brother. Be safe out here. Stay warm. All right? Let me get Jeremiah 51, verse number 63. All right? All praise to the Most High, man. 50, Jeremiah 51, 63. Read that. Jeremiah... 
Jeremiah 51 verse 63. Right and it says, and it shall be when thou right. hast made an end of Start 62. Verse 62. Right. Then shalt thou say, O oh, how thou hast spoken against this place. Right. What the Lord say? Thou hast spoken against this place. Free. To cut it off. What's the Lord going to do? To cut it off. What's coming to America? Cut it off. Free. That none shall remain in it. Right. Neither man nor beast. Right.